the tabernacle reeled up, part two, uh, the glory of the Lord. Today we are going to focus on just the last two verses, in verses 34 and 35. Uh, last week we have uh, studied and we saw how uh, each piece of furniture was put in place so that the tabernacle could be reared up. And today we would like to focus and see what the Lord uh, did by manifesting His very presence to His people. And what does it mean to us? Right? How, why did that happen? How did that happen? The glory of the Lord signifies the presence of God with His people. It was visible during the Exodus in the cloud that covered the tent of the congregation, the tabernacle itself. So this was what we read in verses 34 and 35. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, he observed very well, he says, and the simple message of the whole Bible, and this is what we want to focus on as you look at the glory of God and the tabernacle that was real. What does it really mean? Well, the simple message, he says, of the Bible is that the world, in everything that is opposed to God and trust in man and in his own power, is all going to be judged and condemned to everlasting misery and destruction. So what is there to glory about in this world that we live in? Then he says, now, you see why Paul glories in the cross? That's the purpose of the tabernacle reeled up. It is the cross alone that saves any one of us from the destruction that is coming to the world. The whole world lies guilty before God, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Romans 1, 18. The whole world is going to be judged and it's going to be destroyed. We are all born in the world and of it, and unless we can be separated from that world. We share the same fate. And God forbids that I should glory, save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world is crucified unto me, and I separated from it. Then he asked the question, how? How? Let's make it clear. On that cross, the Lord Jesus Christ took upon Himself the punishment that is coming to all who belong to the world. That is why He died. He was receiving the punishment of the sins of men. We see the God's glory manifested in the tabernacle. It is symbolic of the atoning work of Jesus Christ. This is what the tabernacle and the glory of God is manifesting to us. God is calling out a people in order to show them the solution to man's greatest problem, death and eternity in hellfire. God provided the solution. And the glory of the tabernacle, the presence of the Lord, was to signify and to let us know that this is the way. This is the straight and narrow way. This is the straight gate whereby you would find life. And the Lord wants us to enter into the straight gate and walk that narrow way. Israel was called out of Egypt. Right, in Egypt, they had everything, but they were slaves. Idols everywhere. God called them out. Take away the idols from them in order that they may be saved from the destruction 
to come. And so the Lord wants us to see <clears throat> the glory that is manifested in the tabernacle, symbolic of Jesus Christ's atoning work, whereby we may escape the wrath to come. It is a pictorial manifestation of how men can approach God after God delivered them from their Egypt, right? from their bondage to sin, symbolic of the snare of the world in the idolatry and in the destruction to come. And the presence of God was visibly seen in the tabernacle. The presence of God was also seen at the inauguration of the temple built by Solomon in Jerusalem. 2 Chronicles 5 verse 14 tells us, So the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, of the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. 2 Chronicles 7 verse 1 to 3. Now when Solomon made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. How do we see the manifest glory of God in our lives? It is by our obedience to His revealed will. You see, Israel has reached this stage of their history because they had followed the instruction of God each step of the way. God gave the instruction they followed. And when they followed it, to the exact detail, <coughs> you see, you see, and you notice how the presence of the Lord <coughs> came upon them. <coughs> so our thought today: obedience. Moses followed all the instructions of the Lord in the construction of the tabernacle and the rearing up of it. The glory of Lord God came mightily to endorse their obedience. It was salvation for them and salvation for the world whom they were witness to as a nation. Right? Our series is called The Beginning of the Hebrew Nation. Why did God create the nation of Israel? Because through the nation of Israel, God is going to reveal to the whole world His salvation plan. The deliverance from the misery, the mercy of God, the goodness of God that is revealed, right? that His mercy endureth forever. Jesus says three times in John chapter 14, If you love me, keep my commandments. John chapter 14 verse 15 verse 21 Verse 23, if ye, if ye love me, keep my commandments. If ye keep my commandments, and ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love, ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I commanded you. John chapter 15, verses 10 and verses 14. Andrew Murray said very well, he says, Obedience enables us to abide in His love and gives us the full experience of His unbroken presence. It is the obedient that the Word comes. Jesus says, Lo, I am with you always. Those who are willing to go for the Lord, those who are willing to sacrifice to serve Him, the Lord says, Lo, I'm with you always. And to whom all the fullness of its meaning revealed. Andrew Murray. More so, 
Right? We say this here in our text. When God talked to Moses to reveal himself to men, that was the first time God talked to a man face to face. God manifested his presence face to face in the mount. Deuteronomy 34 verse 10, And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. And Deuteronomy 5 verse 24, And he said, Behold, the Lord our God has showed us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that the Lord does talk with men, and he liveth. God revealed himself to us. Exodus 24, verse 17. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire. And now we want to say, uh, when the tabernacle is reeled up, the glory of the Lord came down. And what does it mean to us? Well, the people in Israel describe, it's like a devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. Frightening. The terribleness of God in His holiness. It was the fire that fell from heaven and consumed the offering of Elijah to authenticate the living and true God. And it's the God of Israel. You remember at Mount Carmel, Elijah challenged the Baal prophets. Elijah said to the people, How long hot ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. If Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. And it came to pass, 1 Kings 18, 36-39, at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. The cloud was a manifest, visible presence of God. His Word was the manifest presence of His mind. It communicated His law for mankind as summarized in the Ten Commandments that binds, that sets the framework for the right relationships between God's people God's relationship with men and also man's relationship with men. So the glory of God was manifested and in it was manifested the mind of God. God spoke to us and God came to tabernacle with us. God reached out to sinful men. Right? Man was made in the image of God. But that image was marred because of sin. But God provided the way out through the blood sacrifice. And this is what was communicated. And also, you see, when God communicated His mind, He communicated to them His attributes, who He is. Merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth. So Moses in 30, Exodus 34 verse 4 to 8 was called to hew two tables of stone. The second one, you remember the first one he made, 
and uh, the people, uh, in a sense, rejected it. When they made the golden calves, uh, it was destroyed and God asked him to make a second one. Second chance, a second chance. Moses rose up early in the morning and went up unto Mount Sinai and as the Lord had commanded him and took in his hand the two tables of stone and the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth, and worshipped. The glory of the Lord is His visible presence carrying out His good will, right? defending His servants Moses and Aaron against the men of Korah who challenge God's peace for His people. They don't want Moses, they don't want Aaron. Number 16, verse 19, And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord appeared up unto all the congregation. And verse 42 of number 16, And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation, and behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. What is the purpose of that? Well, the glory of the Lord, it sets forth the order by which man is able to approach God. And so Isaiah saw in his vision, in Isaiah 6 verse 3, and one cried unto another, said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth, is full of His glory. What happened? Well, because Uzziah intruded into the throne room of God that day and that year, Uzziah died of leprosy. It was so frightening. The holiness of God, the glory of God. When you look at, talk about the holiness of God, the terribleness of God, you talk about who God is, His glory encompass who He is, that He is a holy God. And this was what they saw, the glory of God in His holiness. <coughs> he imparted it to the nation of Israel by the construction of the tabernacle. It stipulated how sinful man can approach a holy God. I remember we, we were looking at it uh, as we read through the text step by step, the various items were placed. The last item was the last items right, were the, the altar of burnt offering, the brazen altar. There the people will bring their sacrifices for the atonement of their sins. And from there, right, God could be approached in the holy place, in the most holy place. And the glory of God finds her fulfillment in Jesus Christ. The word make flesh and dwell among men. The word dwell literally means to camp or live in a tent or to spread a tent. And here it means to take up residence, to reside, to tabernacle among men. God came and the glory of God was manifested fully in the person of Jesus Christ. No cloud. Right? But as a suffering servant, our Lord came. But you remember when He brought His three inner circle disciples to the mount, He was transfigured before them. And they saw His glory, who he, who he was or who He is. 
before he took on human flesh. This was God's plan of salvation. This was God's way. And the railing up, the making of the tabernacle was symbolic. It was to show us the way of salvation. John 1.14 says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, good, full of grace and truth. Psalm 138 verse 5, Yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. The ways of the Lord. How can man be saved? The way of the cross leads home. This is the message that we have to a dying world. Psalm 104 verse 31, The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in His works. What has He done? Well, He has reached out to men and He has given the instructions to Israel in order to rail up the tabernacle. Right? When Israel railed up the tabernacle, the presence of God came upon them or with them. Right? It symbolized the way by which men can approach God. So the tabernacle was the visible presence of the work of the Spirit of God, moving His servants, endowing them with a skill to make for God a dwelling place on earth. Right? After they have reeled it up, God's presence, God's glory came. The invisible God, symbolic of the tabernacle, will lead His people to conquer the promised land so that Israel will be the nation that, will, that God will create to be a witness to all the nations of the world. He shall let Israel, or He shall lead Israel into battle and He shall give them the victory. The presence of God with His people to do battle, Psalm 24, verse 8. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle, Psalm 24, verse 10. Who is the Lord of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. The Lord led Israel to battle when the priests carrying the ark stepped into the Jordan River and the waters parted and Israel walked on dry ground. This is what we are speaking about. The way by which man can fellowship with his Creator. Because only man of all of God's creation is made in the image of God. And God did all these things because his purpose was that man would enjoy fellowship with Him. You see, we are made in His image. All of His attributes, the fullness of it, He imparts to us. Of course, we are finite. We are not infinite, eternal, unchangeable. But we can have well, in a limited way, those attributes that God would have for us, if we would obey Him, obey His commandments, walk with Him, that is glory. The Lord led the battle, or Israel to battle, when the priests carrying the ark stepped into the Jordan River and the river's waters parted and Israel walked on dry ground. Joshua 3, 6 to 8. This is the glory of the progression, you see. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day 
will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water, ye shall stand still in the Jordan. And verse 9 of Joshua chapter 3, And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you. That's the glory of the Lord. The living God is among you. And that he will, not, he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites, the Hivites and the Perizzites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. Behold, the ark of the Lord, of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passes over before you into Jordan. Now therefore, take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe a man, and it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan and the priests bear the Ark of the Covenant before the Lord. And as they that bear the Ark will come upon Jordan, unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the Ark were dipped in the brim of the water for Jordan overflowed all his banks all the time of harvest. So it was harvest time that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon a heap very far from the city Adam that is beside the Zeratan, and those that came down east toward the, the sea of the plain, even the, the salt sea, failed and were cut off, and the people passed right against Jericho. And the priest that bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground and all the people were passed clean over Jordan and Joshua said to the people in Joshua 4 20 to 24 and this those 12 stones which they took out of Jordan did Joshua pitch in Gilgal and he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean these stones? Then ye shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until ye passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us, until we were gone over, that all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord that is mighty, and that ye might fear the Lord your God forever. So they cross on dry land. The ark reeled up. The waters receded. And the conquest of Jericho, the first fruit of the conquest, was the manifest presence of the glory of God to do better. The Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor, and ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days, and the priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horn, and, seven on the, and the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets, and it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. The cross of Christ was the culmination of the glory of God that defeated Satan. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 12, 23 to 31. But we preach Christ crucified, 
unto the Jews a stumbling block, unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greek, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty and the base things of the world, the things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, the things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that according as it is written he that glorieth let him glory in the lord this was how man is delivered from sin death and hell the gospel is dynamite mighty to save first corinthians 1 18 for the preaching of the cross is to them foolishness but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Can you see the glory of the Lord? Do you see the glory of the Lord? When you go to His Word, you will see the glory of the Lord. Do you see the glory of the Lord in your life? Well, this is what the Lord wants us to see. That in the cross is the victory. And the Lord wants us to be so thankful to Him for what He had done for us. To give us understanding so that we will not be ignorant foolish but we will understand and we can be saved do you feel yourself privileged to know the gospel of jesus christ and to receive him as your personal lord and savior when god brought israel out of egypt he instructed moses to build the tabernacle it was to be the visible, physical presence of God with His people. In the Holy of Holies was the Ark of the Covenant. It was to be the throne of God where He would meet with His people. It's a symbol of heaven itself. Right? The way it was constructed, as we have seen, when Israel entered the Promised Land, they would be instructed through Solomon to build the temple of God. The nation of Israel is God's chosen people. And this nation is to point the nations of the world to the reality of salvation in her Christ. In the fullness of time, the Saviour named Jesus, who is the Christ, entered human history through the virgin birth of the, in the womb of Mary the humble handmaid of Nazareth. Jesus is the fulfillment of the tabernacle and the temple reality of God's presence. Jesus will be the sacrifice for sins upon the cross so that sinful men may draw nigh to a thrice holy God. The church in Corinth came into existence because souls were saved through repentance toward God and faith in Jesus Christ as the gospel is preached. It is the same here for us. No other message that we give. The miracle of the new birth was a reality in the lives of the Christians in Corinth. And may it be a reality in our lives here too. Whereas before they were in bondage to sin, now they have been freed from the bondage of sin through Christ. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God indwelling the believer, helps him to understand God's Word, the Bible. 
to comprehend the glory of God. He is able to come before the very presence of God through Christ in believing prayer, beholding the glory of God by the Spirit of the Lord. The mercy seat is no longer available only once a year. In Christ, we no longer need an earthly high priest to intercede on our behalf. No longer must a sacrifice be slain for us. The veil is torn away. God bids us to come boldly to the throne of grace, to obtain mercy and to find grace in time of need. Do you have some need today? Well, we are full of prayer items this morning. May God help us. Hebrews 4, 14 to 16 in uh, closing. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but in all, whilst in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. May we be obedient to the injunction of God, to pray without ceasing, to behold His glory in our lives. May we accept this invitation and appropriate this privilege. Amen.